Welcome to Erudition's PAT walkthrough videos. This video is an introduction to the top front end problems. This introduction is particularly for students who are very new to studying for their PAT, as we're going to be covering the rules for top front end problems and some of the basic approaches to how to solve them. This is our first in a series of top front end videos. So keep a lookout for upcoming videos that are going to cover more strategies and all the different types of top front end problems you might run into. Top front end problems ask you to examine an object from three straight on views, a top view, a front view, and an end view. In the problems you're given two of those views and asked to interpret them and choose the correct third view from an array of options. These problems can be very confusing if you're not used to them, but in my experience, once you get a hang of it, they actually tend to be one of the easiest problems on your PAT. First, let's go over the rules real quick. Solving a top front end is like completing a schematic for an object. The three views are always positioned in the same way. The top view shows the object directly from above in such a way that in the top view, the front of the object is positioned at the bottom of the view. The front view shows the object straight on and the end view always shows the object from the right side, directly from the right. In the views themselves, solid lines are used to depict edges and borders that are visible from that view. For instance, you can see that this flat area at the top of this object is depicted in the top view by these lines, in the front view by this long line, and in the end view by this short little line. Similarly, you can see where this middle section of the object is depicted in each view and how these two lower sections are depicted in each view. Notice how you can see the gap that exists in the object in the top view here and in the front. Now, dotted lines, like this one in the end view, they are used to depict edges that are not seen from a specific view. So this inner edge here on the object is obscured when we're seeing the object from the end view because it's tucked behind here. But its position still needs to be noted, so a dotted line is used. I like to imagine the objects in top front end problems as being made of frosted glass or maybe ice. So the dotted lines represent any edges that would appear foggy to you if you were looking at them through that frosted glass. And notice this edge actually corresponds to this whole inner flat area that sort of lines up. Also, there can be a lot of edges that sit perfectly behind visible edges. And so they don't end up being depicted in the view. Like this edge marked in red is not only hidden by this projection, but it lines up perfectly with the visible outline of this projection. So the visible edge is essentially drawn over it only the edge closest to the view is shown. Let's take a closer look at some simpler objects so that we can discuss in more detail how these different rules manifest within the problems. First, let's talk proportions. The proportions of an object must be consistent between all views. This is a fact that we can rely on and use to our advantage. You'll be able to use the two views that you're given to determine the overall proportions of the missing view. Let's look, for instance, at a really simple block. In a case like this, you'd be able to use the overall height of the front view to determine the overall height of the end view, and vice versa. You can also use the overall width of the top view to determine the overall width of the front view. And that follows right over here to the individual views. And slightly less obvious, the overall length of the object seen here by the length of the top view is going to be the same in the end view. So that we can keep this straight on the object. This is the front, this is the back, and that's the length of the object. And here in the top view, this is the front, this is the back, that's how long the object is. And based on the knowledge that the end view is always viewing the object from the right directly, this is the front, this is the back, and it is that same length. So that proportion corresponds as well. And you can use this same set of relationships to analyze the proportions of individual parts of an object. Let's look at the simple block with a triangular feature sitting on top. Notice that even just the top section itself must have the same overall height in the front view as in the end view. 
This section of the object is triangular, it's got a point at the front, but front view or end view, it has the same overall height. And, like with the simple block, for this top feature, the overall width of this section of the top view is going to be the same in the front view. In the top view, you can see that the feature narrows to a point, but the maximum width is still going to be the maximum width in the front view. And the same goes for that length of the section from front to back. It's going to correspond to the overall length of this section in the end view. Let's talk a little bit more about visible edges. We've said visible edges and these overall borders of an object are depicted as solid lines in these schematics. Here are some examples of common top front end objects. In this first one, we have a very symmetric object that doesn't seem like it's going to have a lot of hidden edges. In this structure, these edges would be depicted in the front view, these would be depicted in the end view, and all of these would be shown in the top view. This is because, if you'll notice, the very top face of the object is slightly smaller than the bottom. So the sides of the object slant in, so you'll be able to slightly see those side faces in the top view. Also notice that edges like these, on the left that are marked in red, are not going to be depicted in our end view because they line up perfectly with these visible edges marked in green. Now, in this second object, we can see solid lines are being used to depict various protruding elements on the object, like this cylinder on top and this semicircle that sticks out on the side. You'll notice that this cylinder appears rectangular when seen from two of the views, the front and the end. It only appears circular when you see it from the view that the cylinder is facing. In this case, it's the top view. Similarly, an object like the semicircle will also appear rectangular from two views. In this case, the top view and the end view, and it only appears as a semicircle when you see it from the front view. In this third object, we can see that solid lines are being used to depict indents or cutouts that are visible from each of the views. Notice that just like with a protruding feature, the proportion rules are the same. The overall height of a cutout is going to be the same in the front view and the end view. And you can use the front view to determine the width of the cutout and the end view to determine the depth of the cutout. You can then use those to determine the overall dimensions of the cutout from the top view. Lastly, this fourth object is an example of a kind of object that's very common on the DAT. It has a very odd, sort of funky, detailed shape from one view, but then from the other two views, it has an overall simple rectangular shape, but with a lot of edges running across it. In these problems, they may ask you to use the main shape to determine the position of the various edges in the other two views. Notice the position of these four visible edges in the top view and how they correspond to the overall funky shape. And then you can see the position of these visible edges from the end view and how those correspond to the overall shape. Problems with objects like these may also ask you to do the reverse where they have you use the positions of the edges to determine what the overall funky shape is. Problems like these can be a little overwhelming, so keep this in mind and take your time. Let's move on to talking about hidden edges. As we said before, hidden edges are depicted by dotted lines. These are often used to show the position of cutouts or holes through the object. Just to clarify, let's look at these two objects. In this first object, the front and end view both make it clear that this is a projection, something that sticks up from the top of the object. While the dotted lines in the front and end view in the second object make it clear that this is a cutout, something that goes down and into the object. That's pretty straightforward, but hidden edges have a lot of variety. So we're gonna look at these four examples. In this first object, Let's look at what happens when you have a cutout or an indent that's only visible from one or two views. This object has two cutouts. One is at the top back of the object and the other is at the front bottom left corner. 
notice that the back cutout is hidden from the front view. So in the front view, the position of this ledge is going to be depicted by a dotted line. Similarly, this bottom left cutout is hidden from the top view. So these edges that face the top view are going to be depicted as dotted lines in the top view. And lastly, the same cutout is also hidden from the end view. So these edges that face the end view are going to be depicted as dotted lines in the end view. In the second object, we can see that in addition to hidden cutouts, dotted lines can also be used to depict components or protrusions that are hidden from view. So features at the back of the object, even if they're protrusions, are going to be depicted as dotted lines in the front view. Features on the bottom of the object are going to be depicted as dotted lines in the top view. And features at the far left of the object are going to be depicted as dotted lines in the end view. In this third object, we see that dotted lines can actually intersect. This can happen, for example, if an object has two holes that go through it in different directions. Notice how the front and top views show the openings for cylindrical holes. In the end view, the lengths of both of the holes are depicted by dotted lines, since the tunnels made by the holes are hidden from view. Notice how the orientation of each of these holes has to match in each of the three views. Don't worry if that's still a little bit confusing. We're going to cover that in detail in another video. Now, recognize this last object is one of those funky outline ones that we mentioned earlier. Dotted lines and Therefore, hidden edges are also really common in this kind of problem. Notice the position of these two hidden edges in the top view. And notice the position of this hidden edge in the front view. OK, we covered a lot in this video. Take a breath. If you feel overwhelmed, don't worry. We are going to be doing an entire series of videos just on the top front ends. So you're going to want to keep a lookout for those. These will include detailed strategies for cutouts, indents, projections, objects with holes in them, and more of these funky outline objects. We'll also be covering strategies for tricky pyramids and prism-like objects, which can be really confusing, as well as arranged and stacked objects. There's a lot of variety in top front end, but don't worry, we're right there with you. We're going to walk you through them. But in the meantime, we also really recommend you checking out our website and trying out our course. We have individual question banks for every single type of PAT problem. These question banks are filled with problems, and they are all separated by levels. This will make studying so much easier, as you can start at level one, get a real hang of top front end problems, get to where you feel like you totally understand the rules, and then work your way up. Our explanations all include high quality models of the different objects to really help you visualize and make sure you understand what each of the views is actually depicting. For every problem, we always have an in-depth explanation. Each problem also always includes in-depth, line-by-line explanations to help you interpret the different views and match lines to edges. With a little practice and some good explanations, it should start to get really easy to interpret these objects and to get all your top front end problems correct on your exam. Feel free to leave comments and questions both here in our comment section on our YouTube and give any feedback you have on our site. As always, try some top front end problems out for yourself and I'll see you in the next video.